Overlooking the sea from a prime position on the Norfolk coast, the Sheringham Museum at the Moe tells the story of a town and its people. The museum opened in April 2010 and is home to a unique collection of historical fishing vessels and lifeboats. The first of Sheringham's lifeboats provided by the RNLI was the Duncan, first launched in 1867. The passing of the years means we don't know what happened to her, but the earliest lifeboat at the museum is the J.C. Madge. The J.C. Madge was built in 1904, Thames Ironworks in London. She was sailed up here with a crew and landed and worked from here for a number of years. But she was a very, very seaworthy boat. She's quite large, she's 41 foot overall, uh, had eight oars aside, so there were 16 men rowing in the boat before you started, plus a bowman and a coxswain. They would be all fishermen in those days. They knew the sea, they were at sea six days a week, and their young sons would grow up with them as well. And so you had quite a range of uh, ages uh, in these boats. They would be wearing ganses, which their wives had knitted, or one of the local ladies. They would be wearing a, an oil skin, probably made from calico, which they would have um, treated with linseed oil or something and made it themselves very often. Thigh boots would be made of leather, it's an open boat, can you imagine what it was like in winter? The boat was the other end of the golf course. So you had, you know, best part of a mile to run. And you imagine doing that in the snow in winter. On one occasion they got there and it was a very, very rough night. There was a Norwegian coal boat had gone aground off Blakeney. And the coxswain stood in the boat. Everybody was out of breath, they must have been. And he said, it's dreadful out there. Terrible, terrible conditions. What are we going to do? He said, somebody needs our help. And they voted to go. She was washed back on the beach twice. So you can imagine they were soaked to the skin before they even got out there. They launched it at night. They were called at nine o'clock. I think by 10 o'clock they'd reached the, the casualty, which was uh, somewhere off Blakeney over Falls Boy. The pumps were working. They were keeping enough water out, but she's got a big hole in her bow. She'd bounced off the Sheringham Shoal earlier in the day. And so the lifeboat laid astern all night. It was snowing all the time, never stopped snowing. Gale was blowing, an open boat, and there they laid. No cover at all. Anyway, come first light, they decided that they would up anchor and they would make for, for, for Grimsby. So she was away for two days at least, nearly three days. And the people in Sheringham didn't know because the telephone wires were down, there was no radio, no, you know, there was nothing. And they actually started, or oh, discussing, um, a commemorative service for the lost Sheringham crew, and they came sailing over the horizon. Every man jack of them, they didn't lose anybody. But it was a pretty rough night, you know. Well, the JC Madge was the first, obviously. Following that, I thought it would be rather nice if we could find another one. They told me I wasn't to collect any more boats. But fortunately, Henry Joyful and his son Robin were down in Burnham on Crouch and they found the Forester was up for sale. And so they phoned us back and we said, yes, buy it. Different people gave us money. The Science Museum in London gave us about 3,000 and various people chipped in and we got her, we saved her. And then um, I knew when the Massey of Oddfellas was coming up for sale she was coming out of service because they were doing away with the Oakleys. There were slight problems with them. And I had the chance of uh, putting my oar in, if you like. I said, we really must try and save her. Where are you going to put them? I said, we'll park them down the high street if we have to. But I said, once they're gone, they've gone for good. So um, anyway, long story short, um, we got some money together. And um, we actually fact, spoke to Manchester Union of Oddfellows and asked if they'd like it at their head office, or perhaps they'd like it in Norwich, or perhaps they'd like it to stay in Sheringham. Anyway, they, in actual fact, bought it for us and presented it to the town. And the museum took charge, and here she is, restored forever, and I hope she'll always be here. We don't put our boats and that in glass cases. You can actually touch them. On that wall is a photograph Way back in 1935, when the Forester Centenary came, the JC Madge was then coming out of service. And there's a photograph there with them standing side by side on the beach. Here we are in 2000, 
and 18, and they're still standing side by side, but in showing a museum. The Atlantic 75 is so much faster than all the other boats. First of all, we talked about the Madge, that was sail and oar, so maximum was what, about four or five knots in a good wind. The Forest of Centenary should do about five or six maximum single engine, so it wasn't a very fast boat. This one did about eight knots, it was twin engine. Very, very good sea boats, but no speed. Where the Atlantic 75, which is an open boat, and it's restricted on launches because it's an inshore boat, but very, very fast, quick launch and quick recovery. Flat out, full speed, she would do 35 knots. You can see the Atlantic 75 and all the other historic lifeboats at the Sheringham Museum.